welcome back to Vampire the Masquerade, the Transylvania Chronicles, here on Dork Tales. I'm your storyteller, Kelly. How are you seeing him? And folks, we are headed back into the Dark Ages tonight. Uh, but before we do that, we should probably get to know our cast a little. Um, let's start that off with Robin. Hello, I'm Robin. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a second gen gamer in the Twitch chat. And tonight I have the absolute pleasure of playing Teresa Donescu, our uh, Zemisi vampire who uses she, her pronouns currently, but I'm a Zemisi, so who knows? Fantastic. I learned how to craft bone last week. Aw, baby's first bone crafting. Baby's first boner. <laughs> Baby's first oh. boning. Boner, you're right. <laughs> Wait. So anyway, like... um, <laughs> anyway, hi Chris. How's it? How you doing? Hi. Not too bad. Uh, the priest is uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, hi, I'm Chris. Uh, or I go by Diggy Blog in the chat uh, tonight. I'll be playing uh, Ronald the. Uh, um, spiritual guide for this group of wayward souls that definitely, absolutely needs to find God. Fantastic. Have you checked behind the couch? That's where I always lose stuff. Um, all right, down, uh, hiding behind the couch is Cal. I'm hiding in front of the couch. Uh, hello, my name is, uh, Cal. Uh, I am Neo Cal in the chat and i use he him pronouns and so does bastien our uh malkavian um uh our malkavian touched by light and dark let's say that touched by light and dark at the and same party with the boning it. no um all right uh <laughs> Welcome back, Cal. And last but definitely not least, uh, it's Jen, who doesn't want to live in a society either. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm hiding under the couch, you know, oh, okay. like a feral animal. <laughs> like the raccoon that's just dug into the bottom of the couch frame and just... <laughs> He's uh, friends hi. with the cat, so we <laughs> yeah. let him stay. There we go. Hi, I'm Jen, and I use she, her pronouns, uh, and I will be playing Ilyona, um, who is our gangrel, who doesn't understand this whole gender construct thing and uh or society for that matter any construct um, and is, really any construct yeah um she just she she is who she is i refer to her with she her pronouns she would probably kill you for asking <laughs> wait Fair. wait till uh eliana suffers the uh the, the golden age of technology that's a lot of constructs she's gonna not have a time if you survive Yay. that long that's the least of your worries yeah first i gotta it's, get there <laughs> it's it's silly but um if anyone remembers the arnold pizza shop uh gag on youtube from like a thousand years ago i just pictured uh aliona being like what the hell is gender anyway shut up with the gender <laughs> Quite Sorry, possibly. did I just reveal how old I was? Mm, uh, maybe. That's okay. You can't tell because we're millennials and we don't age. I saw the yeah, I saw the thing. <laughs> and I was like, hold up. Hold on. Hold up on Kelly that. is older than Fraser. Oh, yeah. But like by many yeah. years. By many. I And like I mean, all of the cast of now. Cheers. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, right. The fact One of that, us is a vampire. Al Bundy was 38 or something like that was like i mean what even i i'm coming up close to those photos of the cast of cheers and i'm like i, I do not look sorry old. what i yeah. did not send you this video yeah. someone someone forwarded it to chris you can watch it later all right yeah. so folks um welcome uh before we begin a couple of fun things uh we have some amazing games coming in april for extra life tabletop appreciation weekend which is going to be april 12th 13th and 14th we're going to be raising money for the bc children's hospital and the children's miracle network so if you want to come help us uh, raise money for kids we're running 14 games over uh 
over three days, and only like three of those games are D&D. The rest of them are all indie systems and like some Onyx Path stuff, and it's going to be great. Bird uh, Crimes! Gonna be Bird <laughs> Crimes! Which is Bird just crimes. its own thing. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic game. You're going to absolutely adore it. You definitely need to come and watch and uh, and donate uh, because that helps sick kids. And you know what? Sick kids are the future. Well, I mean, they are if, we, if you donate. Um, too dark? It's World of Darkness. It's fine. Uh, I'll say we're in the World of Darkness, so I think it was like good. two kids behind that joke. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you caught up. Um, so... Uh, besides that, I have to do a big thank you to our sponsor for the night, Bookworm Games. Uh, Bookworm Games is responsible for these amazing dice that you see in my hand right now. They are gemstone amethyst D10s inspired by Mage the Ascension. And, uh, Robin, I think you have some inspired by, uh, the, the, the vampires over there, uh, that are I bloodstone. I do, but bloodstone. Hold on, let the me get one that is more blood. Blood. Um, this one has Book more red Games in it. Has more than 170 different types of dice. They are an awesome Vancouver area proprietor, uh, and they're they're local and they help us. Uh, so if you want to help yourself, go use code Dorktails to save 15% on your orders. And the best part is uh, not only that you get free shipping at 100 Canadian, which is like 70 US right now. It's it's the the Canadian dollar she week. So please take advantage of it. Um, it's that um, if you uh, if you get something from Bookworm Games, uh, let us know. And uh, any channel points, if you're watching live, like Hurt the Morse, even experience points, uh, I will double all of your purchases for that night. So if you buy three XP, uh, they'll get six XP. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I know our our rooting, our rooting. Uh, our our Gr grimoire i got it um was was uh lamenting about the xp cap because they didn't get here in time enough early to get the xp but if you go by the amethyst it was fate because if you get if you now wait and get the dice and then buy xp you'll give us double xp i will and if you're not the one who manages to do it i'll still count your doubling you know even if you don't manage to spend your points just just let me know just buy those dice um and yeah, it'll be great. Uh, also, the dice are really good. They're like heavy as hell. Also, don't roll them on glass tables. Gonna just give you that advice for free. Um, because uh, you'll have the dice afterwards, but maybe not the table. Oh, I never even thought about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're pointy. They, they, yeah. They are, they are oh, pointy. Oh, yeah. They are sharp on the point. Yeah. They're not like sharp edge dice, but they are, they are, they have points. Their points yeah, they're are satisfying funky. to roll, but I never thought oh, about. They're so uh, nice. They're so glass, they're such a good glass weight. Tables. And they now I want all my dice to be gemstone, to which them, is no, no, no stone dice on this table. No, not on that table. Maybe someday. All right. So besides that, what else do we have to discuss? Uh, besides vampires, vampires are going to be great. Um, we have. Uh, that's about it, really, right? But oh, um, the final episode of Our Brilliant Ruin is tomorrow night. So join us tomorrow night at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, for the finale of our short run uh, sponsored game by Studio Hermitage, which is created by Justin Achille, one of the uh, main writers with the developer behind Vampire Revised and just so much World of Darkness stuff. Uh, so that's his new game line. Come and watch us play it. It'll be a lot of fun. All right, so without further ado, let's hop into Vampire the Masquerade Transylvania Chronicles here on Dork Tales. <clears throat> At the Tehuda Pass, a coterie meets. You arrived there earlier this night and came across a pair of strange guests. A wild man with a French accent named Anatole and a dark woman with a Spanish complexion named Lucida. They introduced themselves and were cordial, saying that they were merely passing through the site looking for some artifacts that had been potentially left here. With the help of the slave girl that you had liberated from the market in Budapest, you found a secret entrance in an old library beneath the burned-out shell of the tower. 
And it was there that you discovered tablets, scrolls, so brittle they would deteriorate to ash in your hand. But these clay tablets, 13 in all, were written with some form of ancient cuneiform, a lost language that none of you recognize. However, luckily enough, a gold tablet with similar etchings as well as a Latin cipher laid nearby. Using the two, your learned members deciphered the message. And once more, I will repeat. Thus, I have set down my true visions that I remember and keep of the path I have chosen. Only I of us shall know the truth, and this shall be my shield and my spear. Most exalted shall I be in the time of the final days. Even the Father shall quail before my might. Let the lesser ones war upon the other, each hearkening to the omens I have foreseen, fools all. By my guile, they know not the actual signs, but merely shadows of things that shall be. Let the world tremble, then, when I come in my might and majesty, for I shall rule above our father, above the mother who gave succor to our father, above the children of Seth, yea, even above God himself. Let the reign of blood commence. There is no author identified. However, it takes very little academic knowledge to see that the translation of father, mother, Seth, and God all are proper words. And yet God and father are separate, leading readers to probably make the deduction, I'll give this one to you for free, that father likely refers to Cain, the first vampire. Yes, Renald. And that was the full translation of all 13 tablets? Yes. Okay. It is not a complete entry, but it does reveal that following words. Um, the clay tablets are about the size of, say, um, say like a Kindle. You know, they are about uh, the size of, uh, a, of an A4 piece of paper. And cuneiform is notoriously bulky. It does take a lot of space to translate uh, very little in modern Phoenician alphabet. So as you were looking at this, Anatole grins through his mass of a beard. <laughs> it's good. We, oui? It's very good, yes? It's so interesting. It's heresy. Oh, no, 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 my friend. It's not heresy. It is merely a prophecy. It's a prophecy. God has delivered us to see this. God has brought us here, and now we see this in front of us. God wants us to be here. Can you not see his divine judgment? It, his divine guidance? It is fascinating. I'll give you that. Hmm. And um, Why has he brought us here to find this. Bastion, can you please do me a favor, my friend? It is late in the night, and you can feel the sun beginning to rise in the distance. All of you can, particularly those of you that have a, a, a lower humanity, will feel a bit more of a prickle as your beast rears up. It feels like... Like... The water is beginning to boil beneath you. The anxious feeling of the sun preparing to set the horizon ablaze. And you, Bastion, I would like you to do me a favor and make me a willpower roll. Difficulty of six, please. Just roll my willpower? Yes. All right. And you know, there's always one thing about willpower rolls. When we do a willpower roll, are we doing temporary or permanent? I believe it's permanent. 
I always feel like it depends on the roll, but yeah, I feel let's go permanent for this. Yeah, some some of them actually do say your current willpower. Some just yeah. say willpower. So okay, yeah. So I'm gonna say mm -hmm. that it's it's total. All right, difficulty six. I think Bastion's full with willpower anyway at this point. This is true. And tens are. Uh, uh, tens are just tens. Uh, four. Four. Okay. So looking at this, you feel a bit of an itch. It's up to you whether or not you decide to focus on this. But this prophecy is incredibly juicy. It is interesting. And you feel the urge to obsess. The cracks in your mind seek this out as if it were a way to staunch the leaking of sanity from your mind. Anatole. <clears throat> oui, my friend? Anatole. Speaks the truth, Reynold. If this was heresy, it would have not withstood the ravages of time. We were meant to find this. We. It could just be about us. After all, wouldn't that be charming to believe? <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, it would be very charming. Are you a father? Am I, I a father? I guess you are a father, my friend. Ranald? You were, you were ordained? Or you were a knife? I was. Ah, God touched you I before am. you were damned. <laughs> we are not damned. Oh. Of course not. <laughs> I merely speak from the you know, mindset of the people. We God has a purpose for everything oh, that we. He creates, including yes, of us. Course. And sometimes, sometimes it's not always glamorous. And what is your purpose, Anal? I send God sinners who've absolved themselves of their sins. So it must be very busy again. in Transylvania. My work will never be done. Fair. Well, uh, Bastian? It seems that you look at this with true eyes. Spent most of my life looking for the signs. And for the first time, I am resolute in knowing that I was meant to be here. Hey, I fear that. Very much. Thank you for agreeing to let us uh, copy these. It should not take very long at all. I cannot wait to tell Lucida. Meanwhile, outside, amidst the ruins, Teresa, you left, leaving the Latin learning to those who speak it, correct? And yes. Elyona, you were wandering around the, the top of the Tehuda Pass. I was building a shrine. 
Oh, that's right, you were building a shrine. Uh, I want you to do me a favor. Uh, while you were building that shrine, can you please make me a dexterity and um, a cult roll? Because I love unorthodox rolls. Let me just check a thing. Scroll properly, thank you. Does this have anything to do with vampiric history? No, it does not. I did not think so, but I had to check. It was worth a, it was worth a try. It is, yeah. Um, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Difficulty? Uh, difficulty of this, how... Or, the difficulty is how intricate you are making the shrine. Hmm... Like a basic, a basic stone like cairn, like a like a little stone stack would probably be like a difficulty five. So like probably a little stone stack with a little altar and maybe a, maybe some bones. I might put Roland's skull there for a little bit anyway, you know. <laughs> Fair, okay. So let's say difficulty seven to make it particularly pleasant to Valis cool. or Velez. That's a lot of twos, but I got two successes. Two successes? All right. So you create a basic altar off the side, a little shrine and altar. Uh, where are you doing this in relation? So the pass is you're on almost at the summit of the mountain, quite high up. Um, it's one of the only flat areas around. You could do it near the burned out buildings. Or you could do it kind of in a slightly more private area, because I'm assuming that the mountain does steeply slope on either side, but there are plateaus and there are trails around the side where game exists. Yeah, I'll probably do it in a uh, slightly more private area, partly because Velas is the god of the hunt and magic and the underworld, so having it a little more private seems right. But also we have a priest and I don't want it anywhere near that priest. <laughs> yeah. He'll probably do something to, uh, to deface it. All right. You spend a bit of time placing Roland's skull. And, uh, as you are doing that, um, You get the scent of blood in the air and and filth just for a second trailing on the wind. It's blowing from the carriage or at least the direction of the carriage. You smell sweat and you smell you smell something that given that you'd been traveling on your own for most of this trek, it hadn't quite scented mm -hmm. before. But it's a foulness. Mm -hmm. And it feels like it comes right as you place Roland's skull on top. As if Velez himself was giving you a hint of the hunt. Or perhaps it's your imagination. I'll follow the scent. Okay. Can you please make me a perception and survival roll? Tracking? Tracking is perfect. <laughs> difficulty? Uh, difficulty of this? Um, do you... You've already got the smell. I'll say seven, just because it's... Uh, it is a little bit... Uh, it is a little bit hard with a human nose. Five. Five? You wander forth, and as you do, you're going to notice that the smell, the smell that you're scenting, it, it's a reek of sweat and rot, and you 
pass by the men at arms that came with you, as well as your handmaidens, giving each one a scent. And certainly, they all they stink. They've been traveling. Mm-hmm. They haven't had a chance to bathe. It's not like deodorant is a thing in this day and age. Not mm-hmm. really, aside from some mint, from some mint sprigs under the arms or something. But no, there's something worse. And slowly, you are going to find your way toward the carriage. And as you enter, well, as you approach the back, you will smell it coming from that long box placed in the center of the carriage. It smells like shit and piss and rot and sweat. Do you approach? I've determined by this point that that is Teresa's, right? It is Teresa's box, yes. I don't think I approach. I I continue trying to like place the smell. But and maybe I'll ask her about it later. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I know too many punitive t- Zimitsis to uh, risk going there. Fair. As you are standing there, determining that 100%, five successes, that is the scent. It is coming mm-hmm. from inside of that box. And honestly, the box is fairly. It's fairly, fairly well constructed. Mm -hmm. In fact, the scent would not be, would not have reached you had a bit of the box not been recently opened. And as you are looking at it, you're going to see a slight crack in its hinged lid, where normally it would be locked tight with a pad. But with those successes, you are going to hear the sound of stones grinding behind you as a slight figure approaches. You're not going to be surprised and will be able to scent the smell of Clara, one of Teresa's, well, her handmaiden. Um, uh, excuse me? Your mistress's I... box is open. It, it reeks. I'm sorry, I was I was cleaning it. Hmm. I did not expect anyone to be present. <laughs> I'm sorry, I it will not happen again. I'm sorry for inconveniencing you, Lady Alyona. Do not put the lady in front of my name. Master? No, I am neither. I am simply Eliona. Then I am still sorry for disturbing you, Eliona. Why does it smell so? It has been a long trip, and many of the components inside are um, fragile. Mm. Something perhaps tipped? Perhaps. It seems like a, um, a believable story. 
unless you wish to roll uh, wits and subterfuge. <laughs> I can roll wits. <laughs> can roll wits, yeah, yeah. Uh, difficulty six? Oh, that's one success. <laughs> You're like, what would be in the box? You know, fine, yeah, it was a pretty raw. You saw how the, the carriage was rocking back and forth the entire way. And now you're just, before you think about it too much, you become very grateful that you chose not to ride in that foolish thing. That instead you went on foot. Because of course something stupid like this would happen. Mm-hmm. There's, there's that, and I fully believe that story, but it also wars with the, like, I don't really believe this mortal <laughs> in general. Mm. Um, and I still plan to get, like, any sort of answer from Teresa later. Mostly, Ilyona's just not, she's not backing off because she knows it makes Clara uh, nervous. <laughs> To her credit, Clara, like, averts her gaze from you, uh, mm -hmm. but will step forward and and try to interpose herself between you and the back of the carriage, um, kind of under the pretense that she's trying to, oh, like, tidy it up or maybe shut the lid a bit more. Mm -hmm. But will keep her eyes low and will turn and, while not looking you directly in the eye as one wouldn't with an unfamiliar dog. Mm-hmm. She squares her shoulders and leans back against the carriage, flaring her arms wide to create as much space as possible. And this is where Teresa <laughs> sees you two. You see Clara backed up against the back of the carriage, her back up, her shoulders splayed. Very uncomfortable. What do you do, Teresa? Uh... For the I, record, Eliona is still probably a good, like, several feet back. <laughs> Just, mm -hmm. She's, like, right there threatening. She's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's there. <laughs> she said she's, she's a conversation mm -hmm. distance, not, like, confrontation distance. Yeah, precisely. And she looks... <laughs> she doesn't... She looks completely relaxed. Yeah. Eliona. Clara. Uh, am I interrupting something? <laughs> I could no, smell no. your box. I'm sorry, mistress. I, I left it open a crack while I was trying to clean it from a mishap on the trail. I was simply curious what could make such a stench and... Clara seems very defensive of it. That is I'm good. She is supposed to be. But I didn't say she wasn't. I simply was looking for answers and I found them. Do you want to see? What is it? <laughs> hmm. It smells bad. <laughs> yes. It definitely does. But it is unfortunate that we're traveling, but usually it doesn't. Hmm. But I had to take it with me. Hmm. You're more I'm than curious. welcome. <laughs> well, follow me. Hmm. Cool. Oh, Yona will perk up a little and just like, oh, hey. I get my curiosity sated. <laughs> Almost like a cat, just like that. <laughs> Alright. Do you um do you step forward? Mm-hmm. Clara will avert her eyes again out of a bit of shock and will step aside. It's alright. You're good for keeping 
Pull away for now. The other two can be oblivious and all it is it is worth it, but Oh you'll know never kinship. And I think she'll appreciate it. Stepping forward into the back of the carriage. Do you open it? Unlocking the padlock? I do. And with that, you reach down and pull open the well-hinged box. In the basement, library, Anatole brings Lucida back in, smiling at you. Lucida, for her credit, is eager to see what is in front of her, but is in no way, um, she's trying not to show it. What did you find? The prophecy? Hmm? So it would seem. Wonderful. It's very interesting. And we are still agreed that Anatole and I may make copies. Oh, I'll be right there with you, making my own copy. Wonderful. Much appreciated. Your other two are in the middle of discussing something, but um, I did not want to interrupt them. Soon, the sun will rise. We had intended to seek shelter from the sun down here anyway. Would you permit us to use this as a haven for tonight? I'll look over at Bastion because he's the only other one there and I see no issue with that. Do you? Hmm? Oh, of course not. My brother, we may have a sleepover. Come, stay with us. Hmm. We oui. sleep over, sleep under, <laughs> perhaps. Ah, <laughs> oh, mon dieu, you're very funny. I oh, love thank it. you. Uh, is it the jester's hat? Is it the hat that gives you your power? It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I should have such a hat. Lucida, no. I have to deal with the beard. That is enough already. On a different note from vampire sleepovers, uh, the rest of these scrolls... Are you familiar, perhaps, with anything that might... might be able to salvage them? I'm afraid I am not, and I wonder what could be kept on them. Secrets they might hold as well. I know. It could be wonderful. But alas, I, I do not think so. It is... Uh... My, pri my priest, you are a man of God, eh? I mean, I am a man of God. I am man chosen by God to bring the visions here, but... And, and Bastion as well, but maybe... If you touch one, God will let you unroll it. Give it a try. Anatole, I really do not think that uh, that is a good... It is a great idea. He has the power of God. God has the power to make miracles happen. Bon, try it. I believe you were the one who was saying that... Claiming that you were chosen? Yes, oh, of course. Fine, I suppose I'll do it. Make me a dexterity and academics roll. Oh, joy. Do you have academics? Wait a second. I don't have academics. I will allow you to make... What is another thing? Dexterity and... Can I make a dexterity and academics to stop him? <laughs> yes, you may. Oh, God. Quickly. I will not be too How many forceful. times has uh, Professor Clark uh, used dexterity in academics to stop 
uh, students from. <laughs> I was about to say, I only use that in my personal life. I'll have you know. Oh, okay. Uh, Dexterity. One. <laughs> one success. Okay. So Bastien is going to go ooh, and reach out with sticky fingers. And Renald is going to push his hand out of the way, brushing the edge of one of the scrolls. And it is going to evaporate as you touch it. God has uh, forsaken us. I mean, perhaps God has forsaken you? Rinald, how could you? Uh, uh, it is... Ah. Uh, um, uh, uh, oh. I... I'll, I'll look over at Lucita because I think she's the only other Satan person there. I'm like, I, my friend, there is nothing you could do. It is an ancient scroll. Were you to still breathe, were any of us to still draw breath beyond just mere words, it would have fallen apart. Try not to listen to them. I fear God as much as any woman, but there is a limit. She says with a smirk. <sighs> like I said, there's no harm in letting them try all of them. Oh. Um. <sighs> I'm very excited. I cannot wait to see what I can find. Ex excuse me. Can you can you move out of the way? I want to see if I can do this. Do you have any occult, Bastion? I do. I'll let you do Dexterity and Occult difficulty 10. Oh, goody. Uh, with a threshold of two. Oh, damn. These are can very I old. spend willpower? I mean, you can, but good luck. Oh, damn, I almost did it, too. I got one. I got one. Difficulty 10. And the willpower the just buys me two. one? Bill willpower buys you one. So threshold of two means the first two tens don't count. Thresholds aren't often used in World of Darkness, but... I rolled a 10. Oh? Oh, I have a specialty in Nimble. Okay, I'll allow it. You may so re -roll I get to reroll one. Reroll the ten and see if it's a ten. Papa needs a new ancient prophecy. Damn, one. What? Oh, you rolled a one on that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? But you still got two successes out of three. So what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to let me just check. Okay, so you use the golden disc to make a translation, and as you are looking at this, you're going to reach forward and just... Anatole is going to do his best, and he starts to slowly unfurl it with the patience of a saint, but then it's going to snap like an overdried wishbone and begin to deteriorate. You go a bit... a bit more carefully and start to just unroll it piece by piece, taking the corners, working with the natural flow of the document. It's old. It's very old. And as you begin to unfurl it, you will find that you can recognize a few words written in Latin. It takes you a moment to look at it, and to really, to really see what you are looking at here. And so the father established himself in the first city. He and his children reigned upon high, 
But soon heaven grew enraged as his descendants multiplied and spread to beyond where they appointed themselves as gods. And so the Lord God issued a flood and then the scroll deteriorates. Oh, it was just getting to the good part. What did you find? What did it say? Was it anything about me? It was. See, Lucita, I told you. Our coming was foretold. I'm sure it was, Anato. I'm sure it was. Wait, you mean to tell me, Bastion, that it was saying that Anatole would be here? Specifically. Not that he would be here, that it was about him. Well, what, what did it say? Yes, please, I'm all ears. Lucida says, leaning in to look at the destroyed paper. It was hinting at a flood that the sins of mankind could only take responsibility for. The hmm. Great Flood. Well, there's at least one that I know of. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean there can't be another. Did he talk about another flood? Another one that is coming to... What? Lucida, it's probably a good thing that we are on top of a mountain. <laughs> yes. Flood of door. blood, perhaps. Well, that sounds like a great time. Rather than get depressed trying to look at these scrolls, uh, I know the sun's coming up soon, but perhaps we can get some work done making those copies. Perhaps it would be a good idea for us to find your compatriots. It is safer down here than it is up in your wagon. Many take this pass. Who knows? Your guards may find themselves overwhelmed. At least inside of here, this secret door should protect us. Very well. Reynold, will you please escort me out to uh, retrieve them? After you. She bows and steps out. I'll, right before leaving, I'll just kind of look back at Bastion and Anatole and just shake my head <laughs> and keep going. I like him. I think he is, he is, he's good people. He just needs some guidance, I believe. So do we all. I'm so happy to meet you, friend. I'm very happy. Although, there's something strange about you, isn't there? I'm told that, yes. Spending a drama bomb. So, I have to ask you, do they know? He do looks I you. know? No, do your friends know? They do not. <laughs> but I will Don't make worry. them. I'll make them know. Don't worry. I will not spoil the surprise. It makes for a wonderful joke. It 
especially when it's one of those jokes that you don't know yourself. I do that a lot lately. Perhaps you'll tell me the punchline before I have to tell the joke. Perhaps, but it is it is not my punchline to tell. All I know is that there is a joke present. Something funny. Something different. There is more. My to sire you. has said the same thing. What does that mean? Who is your sire? The high priest of Kratuva. And as we cut away into the hallway, the last thing we will see is Anatole smile, his fangs poking his lower lip, as if, as if he gets the joke, finally. Out in the hallway, Lucita waits for Renald to shut the door. I have to thank you for humoring them. We both know there was no way those documents could have been saved. It is a miracle that those tablets survived with this place burning down. I do believe that uh, we were guided here. By God or by your patron? whoever has sent you out here to do this mission. Perhaps both. So are you say that uh, your patron is working uh, for God? Aren't we all? In one way or another, uh, whether we want to or not. And that is de definitely true. You humor his beliefs, your traveling companion? Anatole sees things that I cannot. He knows things that no man should know. I do not know if it is God who grants these to him, or the blood of Cain, or something else. But Anatole is a stalwart companion. And in spite of everything that we are, a good man. And plus, he makes me laugh. It's been a long time in my life since I have met a man who can make me laugh, who is not trying to do so, to get me into a marriage bed, father. I am just fortunate that I was never so coerced during my breathing days. And thus I remain free tonight. What about you? What I believe? Where I came from? Yes, and why are you out here? You are a learned man. And you... You do not look like a priest. I was during my breathing. Well, let me restate. You speak Romanian with the accent of a patrician. Your blood is uh, more blue than red, one might say. Many, many priests were from noble families. Yes. I'm just wondering whether or not I know your family. 
a minor family. Uh, von Eggenberg. Eggenberg. Vineyards. <laughs> we make wine. <laughs> she raises a sleeve to her lips and tries to suppress a sharp Aragonian smirk. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I suppose you could call what you do here wine. Well, Austria. I obviously didn't have a talent for it, otherwise... <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. I've heard that priests are Great drinkers. <laughs> Especially monks. I'm sorry. Reynald, is it father or brother? It was father. Hmm. Before I left. Which was before the current condition. But uh, enough about me. What about you? I'm just a girl who wants to be free. No, but uh, I've been trying to teach some of my uh, com traveling companions how to read and write. Uh, it's hmm. not exactly a common skill. And yet you are going to be helping translate and making copies of these tablets? Where do you hail from? I'm like you. I was raised to be, um, I was raised to perpetuate my house. I'm from Aragon. I um, had a very fortunate upbringing, but it was boring. I was plucked from it by my sire. Since then, I have enjoyed the freedom of the night, the freedom of darkness. I'm sure you can relate, cousin. <sighs> you know, in some ways, it's not so free. So much power, so much potential, but it's wasted on squabbles from our betters. A little bit of freedom is what I hope to eventually acquire from all this. I take it your sire leaves you on a long leash? Or not at all? My sire does not need to know where I am at all times. I am very lucky in that. And let us say that... Um, I am my sire's dutiful servant. But I serve him better abroad than I do inside of the court of Peter. Uh, with any points of politics, you would know that Peter II is the King of Aragon presently. Okay. Okay. Um, which, actually, if you make me an intelligence and politics role, you might be able to know who her sire is then. Uh -huh. Three? Oh, no, sorry, that's a one, so two. Two at six? Yep. Okay. Um, most ten. likely, if she is saying she's a La Sombra, that means that very likely her sire is Moncada, the power behind the throne. Uh, a bit of a degenerate, by the way, in, according to uh, members of the La Sombra. He is uh, not as much a God-fearing man. Definitely her new company in Anatole is far different. You keep... Well, 
glance back at uh, where we came from. You keep very different company from your sires. As do you. Shall we? Rising out of the basement, you will approach and see that um, your two erstwhile companions, Eliona and Teresa, are standing at the back of a carriage, your carriage. And as you approach, you will hear the shudder of a large box and the closing of a lock. I think Teresa, first. Eliona. I think first, what Reynold hears is Eliona belly laughing and then okay. the shuddering and closing of the box. So you hear Eliona laughing like you have never heard her laugh ever. ever. <laughs> and like... Uh, uh, I told you. Mm, What's that noise? It is laughter, Reynold. Do priests not know laughter? Is it against the will of God for some reason? (laughs) Far from it, but uh, I was not something I uh, was expecting to hear. Just wanted to make sure nothing was wrong. No, nothing is wrong. We had to keep ourselves amused while you have all been scourging over tombs for the last several hours. We had to do something. I do not hurt it. Is this? True. Uh, it but, is. A bit... uh... It isn't. A... I understand. It is not. Uh... Not everyone's. passion it's not everyone's passion i'm sure more bodies stirring up air from around will damage such fragile ancient artifacts more so it's probably best to uh stay away when we can well actually we uh we were going to suggest, uh, we came to find you and suggest, uh, bringing you down with us for when the sun rises. It's the best shelter, and, uh, this is apparently a well-traveled path. We would have better protection down there during the day. If you would not mind sharing a place with myself and Anatoa, Lucida will say. I have my own accommodations. I will join you. Um, If we can move the carriages off the beaten path, that would be preferable. My lady, I will go get Dominic immediately. Thank you, Clara. Clara says. And Clara will rush off to go get your um, bodyguard. Perhaps I'll look over at uh, Lucita. Perhaps we could be of assistance with moving the carriage. If such menial work isn't beneath you. Dominic and Clara can handle it. It is... It is... It is oh, I, I appreciate think... the offer. I think the horses... Are better suited to that. Are you just trying to impress me? No, I just thought it might be easier to just pick it up and move it. Sure. One on either you may side. be a priest, but I, I can see that you have that urge to just pick up heavy things and prove your might. I saw we it. All we never were, gifts. Uh, our <laughs> gifts. I thought priests are supposed to be humble, not to show off. This is how I can help. Especially after I've... the two of you are, have definitely saved my 
myself in the situations that we've been in. If I can be of assistance, I would like to repay that debt. Even if it's a, a minor thing. Your company and your wisdom are both uh, make up for what you may lack in the physical aspects of battle. And that's where Laviola and I step in. Balance. But thank you, and thank you for inviting us into this. Eliana, I know this is I'm likely wasting my breath, but are you sure that you do not wish to join us? I believe that if I were to spend my time in a constructed place like that, that I might bring it down upon our ears. So, I will take my chances with the wild and the dirt. Well, for my sake, at least, I hope you are still close by in case anything goes wrong. I will you say be. that. As you say that, you see a slight hue beginning to speckle the eastern horizon. It is time to sleep. Well, Aliona, take care, and uh, I would like to take your offer to come visit you and see your area once Tomorrow the sun night. sets again. Yes. Safe sleeping, and she's gonna trot off <laughs> and make a beeline for mm, as close as she can safely get to the shrine that she built. Easily, there's plenty yeah. of earth uh, near it. Yeah, I wasn't sure where exactly where, so I'm like, eh. <laughs> I'm assuming it's probably within a couple hundred paces of the tower. Yeah, that's what I and figured. If, so cool. you're going to be able to get there and, and earth melt <laughs> and earth melt right there. Have you left Roland's skull there for the day? Uh, no, I take that back. Okay, just in case the sun will eradicate it. Yeah, it's it. still a trophy. I I okay. offer it to Velez, but I keep it safe. <laughs> nice. All right, you will earth melt. As the wind begins to pick up at the top of the mountain, you descend down into the basement. And as you shut the door behind yourselves, the four of you locked inside... You can hear the sound of the wagon being moved by a horse and well, by by a horse and rider. And as the door shuts, and you find your comfort on the ground, Anatole is going to smile at you in the dark. It's funny; even those of you who cannot see in the dark can hear the sound of the smile in his voice. You know, I have a good feeling about this. I had a good feeling about this before we came here. Now I have an even better feeling. I was really worried. And you said that you were supposed to pass along the, uh, the, the documents. I don't think that the words here are meant for anyone. Except for us. G -g God has brought us here, after all. And the knowledge there is for us. What? Well, then you said you were going to the hmm? tablets. The tablets are fine. The scrolls. Uh, poof. But we knew that was going to happen. Okay, good. I did thought for a second you destroyed all the tablets. Oh no, no, no. You might have to rip just... out Reynold and Bastion's throats. Oh, you see that she's not going to rip out my throat. Oh. Oh, wonderful. Such a would pessimist. Take off your head first. I will consider that a mercy. 
uh, I was just saying that when you said that you were not willing to, well, that you were not considering the translation disc part of the find. Love it. I love meeting new friends. It's good to know that we are thinking the same thoughts. We were asked to recover these tablets. There was nothing said about anything else. This is how I know, Father. That our friendship is going to be a long one. Very good, Anatole. Now let us sleep. <laughs> yes, of course, this is Won't we? <laughs> or I guess suppose not. Bonjour. We, oui, she will mutter, and will settle down to rest. And at all, generally you have to stop talking to sleep. So that's not Hello. true. My mother always told me. That I used to talk in my sleep. Where is your mother now, Bastien? Perhaps Eliona had the right idea. Yes, I am somewhat thinking that too, Reynold. And as you say that, the day sleep will take you for your first night at the Tehauta Pass. And we will be back in just a moment to see what happens when you wake up. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere, folks. Welcome back to Transylvania Chronicles. Uh, this is the part of the program where we're going to quickly talk to the chat for like 5-10 minutes, and then we'll get back into the game. But how's everybody doing tonight? Y'all good? You're, you're, you're fantastic? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, my dudes. I'm so it's much great. better now that there's a cat on the stream. This is true. The cat makes everything better. This is... Tr this is I'm mixed on that because I'm horribly allergic. You can see well, him. It's, but it's across the street. Like, it's, it's not in the same room as you, at least. Oh, yeah. that's true. That is helpful. I do like your cat in terms of like cats, though, Cal. Because like when you were like, "I'm getting a cat," and I'm like, "Ah, uh, cats are iffy." And then you were like, "Cats are amazing." You... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Take four points of bag. Um, so good for it. <laughs> okay, so good for it. I've already taken egg the, like the last three weeks. Thanks. <laughs> I don't true. need more egg. Uh, but like, I was like, I was iffy on that. But seeing seeing how he's looking when you're holding him, I'm like, all right, this is a good cat. Yeah. Because he looks very happy to be with you and is just like doing the eye thing the whole time. And I'm like, oh, that's a good cat. It was the saddest thing. So we went on break. I'm so sorry. One of the reasons our break took a couple extra minutes is I went out to go grab another drink and to use the washroom. And as I'm out there... My dog Charlie runs up and is like, oh, hey, I got a toy. Kelly, how's it going? Hey, you're out of your room. That's great. And I'm uh, like, hey, buddy, how's it going? Gave him a couple pats, went to the bathroom. He, like, follows me in as he always does. So I'm like, you know, thanks for, for making sure. I guess I watch safe. him as he goes to the bathroom. Yeah, he's, he's just like, mimicking. 
He's like, same, it's bro. It's just normal. Solidarity. He's, roommates he's, like, for so he's, long. Like, he's like, dude, dude, you need, you watch me. So obviously there's reasons why you need to watch someone in case like someone attacks you from behind. So I'm here to it's pack watch yeah, him. Back, he doesn't right? try to collect yeah. my poop. So he's good. guarding you. <laughs> He's guarding me. So, but here's the thing that took why I had to go cuddle him for a minute. So I went and checked in because Christine was in the next room, like watching the stream and just like doing her own thing. And I go in and say hi to her and I leave like Charlie with her. And I'm like, oh yeah, go see, go see Christine, Charlie. He goes in there and then I hear, oh, so apparently the second I left the room and shut the door, he was like holding a toy in his mouth and then like looked up at her and went, oh, and started like pacing with his head down holding this toy in his mouth and i'm like oh god i'm the worst i'm the worst dog friend ever yeah yeah it's true but but also charlie is a is a whiny a whiny he isn't so. yes i know this is why yeah you yeah. you, you, you and you and does he oh yeah well you remember like you remember how he used to freak out whenever you'd come over and like you beep your car like, he knew your car mm -hmm. beep. I know I did. You know my beep. <laughs> he knows that beep. Because my, my oh. lovely fit is very, is very, has a very feminine <laughs> sounding beep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's not like beep, motherfuckers. <laughs> I hate the super loud ones. I used to do valet. Or... Mm. <gasps> Those one. <laughs> when you're in underground parking and you beep it and it hurts your ears oh. and it's like, calm down. You're just confirming that Chill. you're locked. Chill. Chill. You don't need to yell that you're locked. You yeah, can just it's all caps. This it's, is how Cal it's cars and all caps. In IRL. <laughs> oh yeah, I was driven to madness. Oh, to madness. I, I wasn't born with there. it. Oh, driven, but it's um, not Maybelline. <laughs> that was awful, and you all deserve to feel that. Uh, <laughs> what else is happening, guys? Dolls and binary thralls non-binary thralls um what what are we thinking about what are we think about what are we doing? Uh, what's in the box no no that's what we're Paltrow. you asked what i was thinking about i want to know <laughs> what's true. in the box i don't know what i'm the thinking box. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> chat chat you are not the only ones in the dark i've only told now jen so i don't even know what's in the box <laughs> wait what really <laughs> I might know yeah, what's in the box. I don't know. I don't know what it looks box. like, but I know it's. I know it's yeah. there. But uh, yeah, no, when 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 that scene was happening, it was like, oh yeah, we're finally gonna get to find out what's in the box. What's in the? No, no, no. Um, it will be revealed at a dramatically appropriate moment. Yeah, there are a lot of things about each character that are pretty dramatic, and I like that. Um, I think it's gonna be great when when things start coming out. But that could be and hundreds of years from now. And Teresa and Ilyona are making friends. Mm hmm. We're bonding. Yeah. Anytime a Samitsi's involved in making friends, that's a worrying statement. That is a worrying thing. <laughs> no. The Samir, the Tremir, or the Samitsi making friends is always worrying. Tremirs don't make friends, even when they make no. friends. Okay, they make servants. It's true. They make they make enemies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so today was the first world building Wednesday, uh, over on here, actually on Twitch. Uh, I recorded it, but I don't think I'm going to post it to YouTube because it's a lot of me just like chatting live and it kind of takes, yeah, the I don't think, yeah, I don't think that's the, I don't but think I that's thought... the avenue of content for like, that's not a YouTube really it's not a YouTube thing, but it was really good. Like it was a solid presence, like 30 to 50 people, like for a day stream, just chilling. Like, that was you did lovely. have the stream avatars for the first like time, which was great. Oh that my was god, oh, that was pretty great. I don't know why it broke my phone for a while. For I don't a lot of it that, either. it broke in general for a while. <laughs> but I th I'm glad you liked it. I got uh, a lot of stuff done on the dwarf page of our wiki for nice. our homebrew world. Nice. Uh, it's it's pretty good. Uh, it's it's hard to like. It's hard to write on stream because like I had the the windows you could take you wrote more than like... I expected yeah I scrolled down and I was like actually that's it was it was like probably a thousand two thousand words something like that yeah. like it was it was quite a bit nice it's it's really hard not just being like ah yes the Duragar they're dwarves but Russian <laughs> oh look it's the Darrow <laughs> they're dwarves but from Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> I thought you were just gonna say from Texas. Do they all no, like Texas? 
Yeah. Mine, mine, mine. Uh, and the cold. They were going to say something like just... from Texas Roadhouse. From Texas Roadhouse, yeah, yeah, they're just there with like what the butter dip or whatever it is. I don't. I've never been. Me neither. I've never but been I've never been there. Um. So you yeah, know, it was really it was good. So I'll be doing it next week. So come and you'll you'll like the the special bonuses that I have for it. Um, I've got music and I've got like stuff that you can play with while we chat and you can ask me all sorts of weird questions. Um, That's like, yeah, we, we got to have what we, people were asking you. about your. Your, well, people uh, kept asking, like, if I would date a woman with a beard, and I'm like, it was just, it was a weird way of asking the question, where it was like, <laughs> would you, if you were dating someone, would you make them shave? And I'm like, I don't think I would be dating someone who started with a beard. Like, that's just, that's like, there's nothing against it. Like, as a guy with a beard, I respect people who date people with beards. It, it helps my case. But that's not yeah. m my that's not my yeah. preference. Yeah. You're you're allowed to have a preference, and you're then as long be... as you don't, you know, what do they miss? Don't have that preference, or don't have that. Thing. What a, why does why does he need to date someone with a beard? What? So I was talking about dwarves, like dwarven culture. I was building the dwarven wiki page on yeah. on the Rookdale's wiki, and, and I was about saying Vistra. we were talking about yeah, because like, and it was like, would would you date? I guess you can't date Vistra, like Robin's character from *Rime of the Frostman*. I was like, I wouldn't date her anyway. She's a bearded alcoholic cannibal okay the are... cannibal was she had no choice christine just, just oh i heard yes we heard this through the wall we i heard the squeak was, the squeak was i thought it was like a chair moving <laughs> like i thought she's, charlie she's dying right was. now i can hear her going <laughs> through the wall it's great are you okay <laughs> yeah. oh god she's wheezing I can hear the wheezing, yeah. Better make sure she's breathing. Bearded alcohol. Bearded alcohol. We're talking about the, the during World Building Wednesday, they they said they were asking if I would date if, oh, if I would I said list. I wouldn't date this a dwarf with a beard. <laughs> and, and they're like, Oh, I guess you wouldn't date Vistra then. And I'm like, there are many reasons I wouldn't date Vistra. The beard's at the bottom of the list. Yeah, that, that's at the bottom. So, uh, how you doing? Yeah, right? How you doing? She was a mess. <laughs> Christine's crying right now, by the way. <laughs> She, she's <laughs> laughing so much that she's crying and now she's telling me to shut up but no uh, like so robin good. are there many other characters of yours i would i would love to date okay ivy uh not teresa not teresa <laughs> not teresa not even not uh, even future teresa not even future teresa future, future well maybe if she smooths some things out maybe if she smooths some things out oh no i like uh, old teresa Old Teresa, you like Teresa Classic, not new Teresa. Yeah, Teresa Zero. <laughs> Keiko. Cerveza Crystal. What about Keiko? Oh my God! Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Actually, well, we talked. Actually, we talked about that, didn't we? We like... smashed. Yes, because we, we started about talking about the characters, and then we realized who won. Who actually won of the characters for dating? You need to go watch that. Yeah, no, like in terms of because we did our Smash and Pass video of all D and D player races, and then at the end we did our Smash and Pass of all D and D characters, and uh, it was in your homebrew or out of all your games, out of all D and D games that we've ran on Dorktales. Also, like. Uh, like uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't do we didn't do the pass. We just did the who's the hard smash because we're talking yeah, we about did, like the, we didn't we do the, pass. We were talking about the top. We were talking about just like the top characters. Because oh, I was gonna say that's like a whole video if you had to like <laughs> yeah, do so every we, single we, we like character. On them. We went through like who would be our top smash if we were like smashing our DNA. Was it Robin? I think Robin was like, well, Godfrey. Uh, like who who was that? I I watched a part of it. Was it? Oh, yeah. I think it was, it was Christine. Uh, Christine was talking about It was about Christine, that. sorry. Yeah, it was Christine was like, well, like, Godfrey's I, like a I good... Thought, I thought Godfrey was hot. Godfrey was yeah. hot. But he's got... He's 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 too he's too much of a sub. I can't... I can't. God, Godfrey is hot. He's not dead yet. That's true. Yeah, that's true. He's not dead yet. And Alvin Ears, he might as well. Say is, a... Dorlin, one thing I'll say about Dorlin, no problem Dorlin using Fox. toys. In fact, he this insists. gauntlet has a vibration setting. You just never asked. 
You just, yeah. I, I didn't want to ask, but like, now I know. And knowing is half the battle. Um, hey, folks, we're going to be hopping back into Vampire in just a second. Um, welcome. Welcome, Raiders. <laughs> um, but we're just doing So if you haven't watched that video, it's on YouTube. Go go watch it. It's a lot of fun. Even if you don't like D&D, you get to hear us talk smack about a lot of D&D like lineages and races. Um, the the Duragar do not fare well. Dwarves fare slightly better. But you can tell that we all are like Lady D fans. Lady D fans and then like green short mommy. gubba fans. Just anything green. Anything green. So yeah. Does he have a please mode too? Yeah, he has a he has a please mode. Uh you're more here for the vampire content. Well, I mean, like I You're in luck. I'm afraid of you're like, congratulations, there's a vampire stream. Uh, but you should also go check out our Mage games, guys. Go check out Mage the Ascension, Victorian Age, which is coming back in, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, which means I gotta do a lot of work. Look at this dice. I'm so pleased you do. with how big this is. Look at this, Jen. I it's, can barely see a, stress? a foot in front of my oh, face. It is a stress dice. I really want that. I, it is. Those are it's my two favorite colors. <laughs> Yeah. It's the, it's, it's basically blob, the trans me. pride colors by accident. Um, I yoink, and I rolled a seven. Coincidentally, yeah. coincidentally, I've prepped uh, myself for like trans, um, like ally stuff because uh, my favorite color combination are um, cotton candy. The pink basically, and blue. yeah, it's cotton candy or bubblegum, right? Yeah, and so um, GTA Online, which I have an embarrassing high amount of hours on all my cars are pink and light blue that's great and uh it worked out perfect i just wanted to throw right. that out there it's so good anyway i love this dice i got a, i got a kickstarter i backed and that was one of the dice in it and then some like smaller stress dice that are pretty dope um and i just love them because they bounce and my dog hasn't eaten it yet and both things are great uh but hey if you like our world of darkness content real quick um two things number one you should go check out our other world of darkness games even if you necessarily aren't a big fan of games like mage the ascension or uh, Werewolf, The Forsaken, or any Chronicles of Darkness games, go give them a try. You might be surprised. Um, even if you don't generally like things like Mage the Ascension, you might like the way I run it a bit a bit more than average because I try to make it really accessible and it is a it is a game that can be hard to get into. Or it can be a game that if ran wrong can can I mean what smell its own farts, right? It's a very pretentious game at times. Uh, but I hope hopefully I run it pretty well so give it a give it a try uh the other thing is that if you like dark games uh we are not only doing a another stream of our brilliant ruin tomorrow night which is a game by justin achille who wrote a lot of vampire stuff and developed a lot of vampire stuff but we are also participating in onyx PathCon in june this year so it's over father's day weekend and uh, dork tales will be the host of a ton of games uh, and I am running quite a few of them, actually, including one mage game that I'm really excited about. I I wasn't going to run this game or this this version of mage. And then I was driving home the other day and like the plot just like popped into my head. And I'm like, oh, that's a really good one shot. Oh, oh, it's really depressing. And I love it. So give our stuff a try. It's on YouTube and uh, it's it's free because unless you join the Patreon, ding, 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 join the Patreon. Uh, all right. So, uh, any last things before we up again? Anyone have any questions or anything they want to say to the chat? Perfect. <clears throat> all right. I love you very much. Thank you for listening to me talk about banging fictional characters. All right. Let's let's get Ronald's new chapel built. There's about to be a holy war on top of this mountain, and I'm here. Leaving for it. the stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Ronald is leaving the stream. You're going to push him off the mountain. Yes. I mean, <laughs> this is our God make you. This is how he goes. This is how he goes. <laughs> this is how he goes. But let's find out how he goes as we head back in. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome back to Vampire the Masquerade, Transylvania Chronicles, here on Dork Tales. The day passes, and soon you rise from your slumber. You make your copies. And it doesn't actually take that long. A couple of hours in the early evening is all it takes there in that basement room to copy over the tablet. Is there anything that anyone else is doing during this process? 
It's... So... Uh, off camera. I was going to say, during, during the process or while they're doing that? Mm-hmm. Whichever you were asking. Yeah. Uh, so I'm asking uh, whether or not you're doing anything, like, basically during this process. Okay, so, yeah, Teresa and Eliona are have fucked off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, Renault. As a part of this process, I... Like, I, I, I want to actually try and make two sets of copies for um, the group. Um, mm -hmm. One is going to be a translated version. Um, okay. That's in Latin. Um, and then the other, I want to actually try and physically copy it. Like, mm -hmm. as it looks... Uh, so that it's just like, oh yeah, here we gave you this thing, but it's a kind of I want to use this as a potential backup to be like, if they start questioning us and pushing us, that we can kind of kind of like, if anyone's suspicious about us mm -hmm. and this, that's the thing that we have hidden, not the translated version of it, and be like, yeah, okay, we did copy it um, for ourselves kind of thing, as just like a backup. Absolutely. So you can do a basic etching really easily with the type of Perfect. like, like the very thin paper that you probably have on your on your person. Um, beyond this, it, that is what you're going to be spending the first part of your evening doing. Bastion, are you participating as well? I'm assuming that you're probably pretty fixated on this. Gonna be <clears throat> uh, making a like exactly like you had said, like a rubbing of it. Mm. So it's because it's kinoform, right? So we can kind of... Yep. Um, oh, geez. Yeah, as accurately as as possible, especially if Rinald is going to be uh, focusing on... I guess we could do that at any time, the, the translation to Latin. We could help him with mm -hmm. that. So yeah, I'm just going to be like doing this as accurately as possible. Sounds fantastic. Oh, and helping Anatole um, because they wanted a copy, right? Mm -hmm. So helping them create a copy too if they need. Sounds good. So you can absolutely do that. And um, as you are doing that in the basement, Anatole will say, so... What is to become of uh, the golden disc when this is done? Will you bury it? We'll have to discuss that between the four of us. Hmm. If you want, I could take it and hide it for you, but I understand that it is your property. It is just an offer with no weight attached to it. I would prefer that uh, we keep it that way if you ever need find something else that needs to be translated we can help you with that this is why God brought you to me or me to you I suppose that is very clever which of course we would be happy to help with wouldn't we Bastion we would yes I Understand. I am curious who made the golden cipher. Hmm. Me as well. Someone, I mean, obviously it had to be in a time when Latin was a language worth translating into. So perhaps the last thousand years? Oh. Perhaps a bit more? Curious. And why in gold? Um. Hmm. It damages so easily. Many Musical. questions. Maybe I'll study the cipher itself. Hmm. Carefully. Hmm. As but you yeah, but yes, I, I agree with Ren Renald that uh, I think it would be quite interesting should we ever come across other ancient 
what what was this old language called? Made in the clay? Perhaps a Nokia. So curious seeing. They must have made it with what? Small triangular pieces of wood? Into into clay. Almost Godbarks. mysterious ways. It's a piece of art and of itself. No no doubt why we had come here, but why we must send it back. Well, sir. And what of what of you and your companion? Well, Lucita and I, um, once we have this, we will move on. You said that you have to deliver this to, uh, to your patron? Aye, yes. Hmm. Do you just well, wander? We... Or do you follow some sort of are you following a prophecy yourself? God delivered me and guided me to this moment. So I, from here, I wait for his next guidance. Perhaps we are to give the next guidance. Oh? <laughs> Perhaps. You could deliver these tablets for us. Capital idea. That would make sense to, to deliver it. There is no reason why we cannot. It is back along the way we came. Uh, you, we will, you were headed. We, we will have to confer with the, the lady Teresa. Oh, we and I would have Leona, to confer with Lucita. Of course. course. Uh, is wood put? Would connect you to them and let him know that we've made allies in our short oh, time that, here. That might not be a good idea. No? Are we not here to make friends, Reynold? Yes, but uh, they don't necessarily need to know who our friends are. Yeah, we could always break away before we get to wherever we're going. Mm. Let's uh, talk to your friends and to Lucita. And maybe we can see what we, uh, uh, what can be done. Yes, I do not wish to make any decisions without the consensus of my, uh, my friends. And with that, we fade outside to a small shrine. Aliona is already up, but because when she wakes, her hair kind of goes back to normal and doesn't really isn't really like all styled up like this you can actually see her fox ears <laughs> um on top of her head as she's like putting putting her hair up um around it but she's also uh part of how you find her is uh you were mentioning in our little private talk about it um that you we're bringing your raven as well. Mm -hmm. But you can also hear her reciting poetry, it sounds like. Hmm. Um, it is in her her native uh, native tongue. What is it? Eastern, Eastern Slavonic. So, you know, you might not catch everything, but mm -hmm. I know that you, you also speak some of those. Yeah. So yeah, she's just, she's reciting something repetitive and that seems to be in a rhythmic rhyming pattern. And mm. as she's like moving her hair around and like braiding it up so that it, it looks more like a hairstyle than just straight ears. <laughs> <laughs> so would she find you there at the, um, at the shrine or would you find her beforehand? Nope, she's finding me at the shrine. 
Okay, so approaching that is what you were going to see. Yeah. Hmm. What a uh, pleasant location. Yes, I wanted to create something in thanks. (laughs) Thanks to what? (laughs) I'm assuming you do not (laughs) follow the Christian gods by your reactions with Reynold? (laughs) No. The the Christians have sought to wipe out the old gods, and there are those of us who take pains to remember and continue to believe in them. (laughs) This is a shrine to Veles. God of the underworld or the hunt. <laughs> I like its simplicity. Now, Teresa, as you look at this shrine, and Eliona, have you placed Roland's skull back on it as a trophy? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so there is Love a- it fanged vampiric skull flayed down to the bone the eye sockets empty the brains removed the fangs at least from the top still prominent resting atop it do you have any points of occult oh yes I do you can make me an intelligence and occult roll at a difficulty of seven because this is a little bit eclectic for the region but not like super eclectic you would have a much better chance knowing about Velez back then than you would today Mm -hmm. Uh, I got one success I got one ten okay so you roughly understand the the pagan religion that she worships it's been Mm -hmm. driven out by the Christian onslaught uh, but it still exists in little pockets and there are still pockets of faithful pagan uh, pagan tree Pagan tree? Pagan tree. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, in that region, and particularly where you were raised as well. Although, of course, Christianity is the dominant force there. Uh, now, I have to ask you, as you were looking at this, Teresa, you are a monster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you a faithful monster? How does uh... this reach you. Your other two coterie mates are obviously quite religious and believe in Jesus Christ and the Lord God. But as you look upon this, what is your your gut reaction to this? Her gut reaction, uh, I, she was raised very religious, um, but I think through life, she has definitely wondered what God would do this to her. Uh, throughout her life and what she deserved for this. So I think she definitely she follows the religion and she's religious and she does her her prayers and ceremonies and goes to service. But it's definitely like as as toward atheist as you could go. I think on like the service. Yeah, in this era she's probably lip like, service. Lip service, yeah. exactly. It it is it is truly lip service for this because she's she's not okay. very faithful. So this is kind of like I imagine this is kind of a similar feeling to say someone who had a had a rather Christian upbringing hanging out with like like a cool like Wiccan friend they met at college for the first time, right? Like there's posters <laughs> and black candles and mm-hmm. you know that kind of stuff, and you're like, oh, this feels a little naughty. I feel a little weird being here, right? Okay. Yeah. I grew up in Missouri, guys. I get it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was right. raised a Christian and definitely am not now. Yeah. First girl. Uh, so, so exactly. as you are looking at this, you see the skull placed there and you'll hear the 
as your raven, <laughs> Paul Nareff, lands <laughs> on his shoulder. I, I'm not going to be able to have his name. Actually, be his name, is it? <laughs> Paul Nock, right? Paul Nock, yeah. Paul Nock. Paul Nareff, yeah. It's yeah, Paul Nareff. <laughs> I know. Huh. Intriguing. I'll start. <laughs> I see I'm not the only one to have souvenirs. You are Dimitri. Yes. Right? Yes. Have you ever been told of the cult of Velas? No. It is old, and some say the Gangrel <laughs> formed it, but no one knows for sure. We are a cult that worships Velas, and it's in the name, but... We also devote ourselves to maintaining his shrines and his practices and the wild hunt. Hmm. I am known as a Vila in their ranks. Vila. And my Mentor, patron, whatever you want to call her, Valeska. Is one too. She was at the meeting. Yes. She was the Missy, wasn't she? Yes. Velez chooses those who show great savagery. Interesting. Something our clans have in common. Yes. I think I would like to know more. <laughs> Definitely seems to align with my beliefs more of late. I would be happy to teach you on the condition that neither of us bring the other two to the shrine. Yes, I feel both of them would have quite a reaction. If they find it, so be it. I've not hidden it very well, but... Please. Yes, not going to be going and offering up a tour. Precisely. Are the others at their books? Yes, they're back down in the church. I worry that they're getting a bit too comfortable with our guests. I feel mm. I may need to go down there and assist, and if not, just listen. But uh, the freedom being up here. I can see why you do not like cities. <laughs> the wind on my face, the smell of the mountain air. It is fresh. It is a new start. Much like times of my life, you just start again. Hmm. 
Yes. Thank you for sharing with me. I've definitely felt a kinship with you since we first met. I believe that I was... Uh, though it was not said directly. I believe I was included in this little... mission. In part, because of you. Mm, that may not be accurate, but... I don't think it's a coincidence. <laughs> yes. I have a hard time believing in coincidences, especially with sires. Hmm. Yes, well. Sometimes the less said about sires, the better. Yes. Shall we go make sure that the others have not sold home and cattle to the others? Yes, that is a good idea. They are <laughs> too trusting, I think, for <laughs> benefit. I mean, I don't think not, but... And uh, Eliona will will stand, and she's going to take Roland's skull at this point because she doesn't want it to just get stolen or anything. It's mm -hmm. still her trophy. <laughs> and uh, and head on back, um, not super quickly, but you know. Mm -hmm. The Tahuta Pass whips wind around you. You feel the dust cake at your ankles and travel clothes. And as you head back, you can see that there are, well, few of your workers, your guards, are absent from the camp. Dominic is standing nearby, keeping um, a respectful distance, not tracking where you have gone, but staying within earshot of where he thinks you are. And as you were approaching back, you will see that over by your carriage, Lucida is standing. She is looking onward, admiring the tall horse that had pulled it. As she hears you coming, she turns and gives you a nod. Good evening, lady. Good evening. A fine animal. Yes. I find that to be one of the tragedies of this. I used to love riding. Now. She looks back at the horse. The horse notices the two predators staring at her general direction box whinnying uh, with a I bit of fear try and make eye contact with it and use animalism to calm it down yes you can I'm going to spend a hurt them more uh, so that'll mm -hmm. be at a difficulty of 8 cap uh, hold on let me scroll back to the beginning of animalism for my roll uh, that's just doing the whispers to the wild uh Manipulation plus animal can. That's right. And it's difficulty eight. Kip. Difficulty eight because this thing is spooked. Oh, I know. But uh, Therese is going to be like... Whoa. Whoa. Okay, well, at least there was one eight there, so it's not a botch, but it's a fail. <laughs> a fail. All yep. right, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend your drama bomb. 
looking mm-hmm. at the horse. The horse is going to look at you. It is still hitched to the carriage. For it looks like they moved the they they moved the wagon around a bit during the day to to carry some supplies and to well, just some general movement. But for some reason they have neglected to unhitch the horse this evening. And as you look at it, the horse has had enough. It balks and begins running. Can I get an initiative roll, please? Oh, fuck. (laughs) It lets out a whinny of terror and begins riding directly toward the edge of the pass. I need to buy a dot in dexterity to get a specialty for because I rolled oh, a panel no. on initiative. Okay, so Lucida, uh, Jen, you were coming up on this, so Alyona will be able to roll initiative as well. She will be acting in the second round as she is taking a moment to clear up the shrine. Uh, so mm. for, I rolled a <laughs> one for Lucida, so that is a grand total of uh, eight. Sorry, you guys, you can't beat a horse. I rolled a one for the horse. You can beat a dead one. Yeah, you can beat a dead horse. You can beat a dead horse. Okay, so looking (laughs) at Hey, this wouldn't have happened if you gold the horse. Just saying. This is true. Uh, That's true. Oh, wait, then it wouldn't be able to... Aliona, horse... ...during the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? Yeah, it could. Ghouls can. They don't have light sensitivity, do they? That's the point of ghouls. No, they totally don't. Oh, okay. I mean, they might, but that's that's called a nightmare. Oh, All right, but um, I can turn Chris off right now. Hold on. All right. <laughs> turn him into All the right. ghost PNG you turn use. <laughs> God. All right, there is a sudden balking, and the horse is going to rush. Uh, it is going to be barreling down directly at you, Teresa. Uh, what do you do? You have initiative. Um, I think, uh. You can only do physical traits with blood, right? You can only do physical traits with blood, yes. Okay. Uh, it whinnies in terror and rushes directly toward you. Now, the way I see it is that you are kind of off to the side. The old tower is kind of over here with the carriage alongside next to it. You are kind of standing about, mm, about 10 feet in front of the horse, enough that you give it a little bit of space. Uh, she was keeping a distance from it, but it is going to rush directly at you, and Eliona is going to be coming from the north. Uh, I think she's going to step out in front of the horse. Um... Can I split my action? Yes. To try uh, the call of the, not call of the wild, whispers of the wild one more time, and then also grab the reins and halt the horse. So what you were going to do is you, now are you trying to physically halt the horse? Yes. Okay, so what you are going to do first is um, we are going to split your dice pool, or you're, we're going to do mm-hmm. a multiple action. So mm-hmm. the first one is going to be whatever the difficulty would have been, which mm-hmm. I'm going to spend another hurt the more because I have so many of these. So that's going to be at a difficulty of nine, minus one, and then your next one is going to be strength and animal ken. Or yeah. strength and ride. Uh, there was no... Oh, there is a ride, but I'll do animal ken. Mm-hmm. Um and then I can reflexively spend blood to buff my strength? Yes, you can. Perfect, I'm putting three dots of, or three points of blood into strength for that. Uh, okay, so animal can and manipulation, difficulty nine. I'm gonna spend a willpower on that roll. Sounds good. So I'm rolling five dice for that. Okay, the horse is going to rush you. Let's see if you do it. Oh, shit. I rolled a nine and a ten. So that's oh. two, three successes. Damn it. Okay, so you are going to use this. Uh, you're using the basic command, right? Halt. Okay, so with that in mind, what I'm going to have you do then, uh, why don't you give me a strength and athletics roll to hold on to the reins and grab them? Okay. Okay. With the minus one. With the minus one. Uh, and what I'm going to do difficulty? is uh, your difficulty on this. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you're just grabbing the reins and pulling, so I'll say it's difficulty of eight. Okay. Simply because my days are so chaotic today. Uh, that is going to be because I rolled two fucking ones. That's going to be a fail. It's going to be a fail. All right. I'm going to spend a hearth the more to make it even worse than that. Uh, the horse is going to lurch forward, screaming in terror as it looks at you. And as it lurches forward, you are going to halt it, looking it directly in the eye. Halt. The horse is going to obey, but unfortunately, the laws of physics do not work in the horse's favor. As you <laughs> grab on to the reins and pull the horse to one side, you are going to become tangled up and swept off your feet. Even with your with your increased strength, you are still in a frail old woman's body, and you are swept up with the horse. The horse, to its credit, immediately stops, but the wagon behind it does not. Can I get a stamina roll for you and the horse? Oh, uh, I will make the one for the horse. Okay. My dice. What the? That's a botch. Okay, you can't botch stamina. Uh, okay, so fail. <laughs> okay, and the horse uh, got two successes. Uh, so I am going. So it's a very quick jerk, which means mm -hmm. that I'm only going to give four dice of bashing damage. Uh, and I rolled two tens. Great. Okay. Uh, so you fail. You are going to take one, two, three, four, two points of bashing damage. Okay. Uh, after it reduces. And uh, as you are going to slip beneath the carriage and feel your leg uh, run over, grinding your Ooh. knee into the stony earth beneath it, the horse itself is going to slip and you're going to hear the wagon start to roll over the horse's thigh as it comes to a stop. The horse is going to whinny in pain and is going to attempt to struggle free using a strength roll. And uh, the horse is going to not be able to get itself free, unfortunately. Uh, but is going to still kind of be stuck underneath and enduring. Uh, Eliona, you are hearing this whinny of pain as you are coming back up, um, and you can approach, but not directly engage at this point. Yeah, no, I'll run up. <laughs> Teresa, can you do me a favor? I need you to make me a self-control roll at a difficulty of six. Okay. Actually, I'm going to need it at a difficulty of seven because this is humiliating and you can see several of the guards looking onward as you are ran over by your own carriage. Cap, uh, is this to Frenzy? This is for Frenzy. This is so for that is Frenzy. So that is nine. Okay, difficulty because nine. Because of my revenant weakness. <laughs> All right. Okay. Great. Great. I uh, think Terrence is having a uh, horsey snack because uh, that's difficulty nine. I'm rolling two dice. Yeah, it's a six and a five, my friends. Okay. Thank you find yourself pinned underneath the carriage along with this horse. It looks at you with wide, wild eyes, still frozen by your command, and you feel the beast take over you. Eliona, as you approach, you see the spindly, wrinkled hands of Teresa lash out, grab the horse by the side of its head. And what is your strength rating right now, Teresa? Five. <laughs> With a roar, you are going to see her grab the horse by the jaw. It is going to let out one final whinny, and then you are going to hear a ripping sound as Teresa begins to tear its throat open with her bare hands. Horse Girl Robin is not thrilled with Teresa right now. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa's right. loving it. Conflicting emotions. Conflicting emotions. There is a... Conflicting emotions. Robin's there like, is... this is fucking terrible, but also this is great. <laughs> There is a groan of wood as Lucida takes a step forward and grabs the edge of the carriage and hefts it nearly effortlessly with unholy strength off of the two of you. 
which unfortunately, at the top of initiative, is all that you need. As the horse lets out its final gasp, there is a resounding crack like stone breaking as its vertebra shatters, and Teresa tears its throat out with her fangs. <coughs> Alyona, what do you do? Well... <laughs> I think I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to buff my strength. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to spend three blood because that's what I can do. Sounds good. Uh, buffing strength to five and dex to four. And I am going to observe and hold an action to protect myself if she comes at me. You'll hear Lucida. Aliona, can you get them free? I cannot see. She is fine. Lucida will raise her eyebrows and, and glance down. Teresa, mm -hmm. your rage subsides as the animal shudders and dies. And you can feel its hot blood pumping over your chin and chest. There is a moment where your undead muscles tense. And then there is... You realize you're holding something in your hands. Hmm. It is heavy. Well, it is... It's not heavy. It's bulky. And it should be heavy. But the sinew and muscle of your slim arms is like iron now, engorged with the blood of the damned. Looking down, you are holding something in your hands the size of a sack. The dead eyes of the horse look up at you from its decapitated head. Its tongue lolls over your wrist. What do you do? I think she will just... Put the head on the ground. She will take her sleeve and just wipe her mouth and chin. Mm hmm. Uh, and then she will, uh, proceed. <laughs> Damn it, Cal. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna stay, I was gonna start drinking its blood, but now I see that you said slurp out like a bowl of Tim Horn's jelly. <laughs> uh, she will replenish the blood since waste not want not. Uh, but she'll do it more dainty. And, Aliona, can you make me a perception and alertness roll? Um, perception and alertness, you said? I do, yes. I'm guessing my specialty in wilderness does not apply. No, it will not for this. Difficulty six? Difficulty of six. Cool, four. You watch her begin to devour the dead horse. And that is when the sound of hoofbeats comes into your ears. For you noticed 
that several of the guards were not present here. But as you turn, you will see lanterns, a cart, and several guards, Lucian and Ivan, leading them, heading up the side of the mountain some hundred feet back. And in the darkness, you can see that the cart is laden with workmen. Brought here to work on the edge of the tower. What do you do? Teresa, we have company. What? Workmen. Oh, shit. Trey's gonna run into the darkness. Okay. Can you please make me a dexterity and stealth roll at a difficulty of five? Uh, okay, what's the penalty if you don't have the skill? Uh, it, it is, uh, stealth, stealth is, is minus in, one. Minus one if it's in the second column. Okay. Yeah. Who yeah. I'm gonna spend a willpower. <laughs> Probably like, a good idea. You know, yeah, I don't want to um, watch this. Now that said, uh, you can regenerate uh, two points of blood from drinking the horse deeply. Nice. Uh, can I reflexively put some points of blood into dexterity? Have you already made the roll? I have not. I have hold the, holding okay. the dice in my hand right now. Yes, you may. Cool. I'm going to spend uh, all two points of blood uh, into dexterity. Cool. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now I'm rolling five dice instead of two. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. Oh, what's my difficulty? Difficulty of five. Okay. With the, what the actual shit is this dice? I've been rolling two ones and on my total? dice. Uh, so with the willpower and my successes, because I rolled three successes and two ones, so I have two successes total. Okay. All right. So uh, luckily for you, you are going to be able to stumble into the darkness coated in blood. And I think you're going to hear Teresa start. She's going to be like... Um, what sort of animals, like predators, would be on this sort of uh, probably, mountain road? I'd say mountain lions, maybe. Okay, I was thinking that. Uh, bears. Bear, cat. The uh, greatest yeah. predator, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is true. Um, I would say wolves, bears, maybe mountain lions. Cat. Uh... Yeah, I think Therese is going to be hearing, uh, she's going to say that and she's going to be like, A wolf! A wolf! It, uh, it killed the horse! It killed the horse! You will hear a bit of a commotion coming from the carriage as it comes up. Uh, there will also be a grind as Lucida sets the carriage down and is going to just kind of back away from everything. Uh, Elyota. You are kind of right in the sight of this carriage as it's coming up the hill if you remain there. Yeah, I'm I'm going to kneel down and be looking at the horse as though I'm looking for, like, any sort of signs of anything. What the? What's going on over there? One of the workmen at the back of the, of the cart says. There are wolves here? Where are there wolves on top of the mountain? There's... A creature attacked the horse. It looks... It looks like a wolf. It, it attacked the horse and then it went for... I was trying to stop it and it... 
she will come out of the, the bushes after she has, like, wiped her mouth a bit, but being, like... As you are there, uh, I'm going to spend if something good happens. Um, before you can even step out of the shadows, Clara has ran up to you and wrapped you in a cloak. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Because she is a good retainer. She is a good retainer. So yeah, Torres is going to be like... <sighs> I think I chased it off, but it, it, I, it was some sort of small creature, but desperate. It was so, so hungry. It, I think, just attacked out of, it spooked the horse, and I don't know. I, I, it tore its head clean off. off. What the fuck? What kind of wolf could do that? A big one. Have you not heard of the wolf of Klausenberg? What? Please do me a favor, Eliona. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a real thing, or are you making it up? It's Mitru. Mitru patrols outside of Klausenberg oh, as a wolf. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> do me a favor, then. Oh, make amazing. Me, make me a charisma or manipulation, whichever you feel is, is better for this, uh, sure. and intimidation roll. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. I'm spending a willpower on this. I just want to say, well done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm I was like, there's no way we're going to pass this off as we'll anything this but an attack. You read my mind. You 100% read my mind. Difficulty Beautiful six. Gen. Difficulty six. Sorry, what was the difficulty? Six, please. Uh, that is two successes with the willpower. Mother of God. The creature has made it up here. We did not sign up for this. Don't care how much your nobles are paying. It was one animal. But what about that? Next? Are... We keep a f we keep torches and fires out. The animals are s smart enough not to go near fire. We just to be better prepared. We were sloppy and lazy and. Did not think it would, either that one or one like it, would be up here. Besides, you are also strong men. We were just weak. A voice will call out of the shadows, light and lilting, that you recognize as Felix. The lady has a point, eh? Think about this. An old woman, no offense, my lady, was able to chase the beast away. Perhaps something with a little more. He grabs his crotch. Fire? Could do it even easier. He winks at the men on the cart. Uh, Teresa, can you please do me a favor? Uh, mm -hmm. Make me a charisma and leadership roll. Uh, can I go with subterfuge? Nope. Or... Expression. Nope. Cap. Because cool. you're trying to I lead don't. a group of people. Cap, I, I will have. give it to you a difficulty of five because of the assist. Cap, cool. Someone's got to have to bite the bullet and become the leader. I know. I guess I better buy that. That's the next XP spent here. <laughs> Dalton leadership. You're a lady. Uh, you should already have leadership. I know. Uh, I'm going to spend a willpower. She's because... learning. <laughs> exactly. Uh, difficulty five, you said? Yeah. All right, that is with the willpower, two successes. The men settled down. And we're going to cut to the basement again, where you've finished, you finished the, um, the work on the inside of those tablets. And as you do, you are going to hear a voice out in the hall outside of the secret room. My father, my ma master Renald. You will hear your other servant speaking in the hallway, Renald. Still wounded, but in better shape. Carl looks around and calls out to you. I know not where you are, but the, the workers have returned. 
Perhaps they could use some instruction on setting up the camps. Uh, if you'll excuse me. Of, of course. And I'll, uh, oh, if it's Carl there, I'll just come right out. The door opens and Carl is there, still a bit bruised up, but healing well. Glad to see Here you I... recovering quickly. Yes. Thanks That's... to your ministrations and the will of God, sir. Mister. Very good. Very good. Let's get these men to work. We have a chapel to build. With that, you step out and are greeted by the sight of several dozen workmen standing around the square outside of this town, this cha um, pardon me, this tower, looking at a decapitated horse. Um. Carl will lean in. The Lady Teresa. Excuse me. Excuse me. What are you all standing around for? Uh. Uh. Do you want your wages garnished? Hmm. I, I don't believe we're paying you to stand around. Uh, yes. Uh, where where can we set up our tents? You can set your, up uh, some of the tents over there. I've already got some preliminary ideas of where I want the chapel set up. We should start with that. Make sure that all of you are well taken care of spiritually while you continue on the work with the tower. Uh, who who's in charge of the um, of the plans? I have a some degree of uh, knowledge of mathematics myself, and to wish to assist in that matter. A man will step forward, raising his hand. He's a stonemason. He introduces himself, a carpenter. Excellent. And then says that the rest are, are are just workers, but they are they are hardy stock, my lord. And they listen to you. Uh, yes, I am. I am Gregor. Excellent, uh, Gregor. Yes. This is what we're going to do. And I, I just start trying to disperse people, directing them different things. Uh, start talking with Gregor about how the chapel needs to be the first thing that is built directly above the area wherever the uh, secret uh, thing is. Um, and uh, basically just start trying. Anytime people look like they're standing around, I'm there. I'm I'm like, no, what are you doing? Like, get to work. You need to set up. I'm just on everyone's ass. Okay. So, as you do that, it appears that they get to work. And things settle down. Riding everyone's ass like that, you are able to quash the situation. Later that night, you all assemble in the basement there. And it is there with the documents in hand that, well, Eliona, would you go anywhere down there? It doesn't hold much interest for me anyway, okay. and I don't, she's don't not sure it. where where the limits of her curse is. So she's like, I don't want to wreck all this stuff. Fair. <laughs> So down in the basement, the rest of you meet. And the toilets told me that you plan to send these back to, uh, back to your, um, your patron. And that you have asked whether or not we would be willing to uh, accompany it. Well, we... I want to make sure that that is uh, acceptable with uh, our compatriots, but uh, we thought if you had nowhere to go, perhaps that would be uh, a safe way of delivering them. If you send 
send some of your men along with it to safeguard it. We can make sure that your men are safeguarded. Of course. But, uh, again, uh, I'll need to check with, uh, well, at the very least, Lady Teresa. Yes. Um, and, yeah, Lady Teresa. Yes? I thought it might be, uh, and uh, I'll try and actually have this conversation away from, from them. Um, mm -hmm. excuse me, a moment to discuss this in private. Of course. Um, I thought it might be prudent to send the tablets back with uh, our new companions. But uh, of course I didn't want to just uh, immediately make that decision. How well do you trust them? Uh, we've known them for two days. Well, they would and not be going... Ancient tablets and our patron is requiring them I would be very worried that the temptation to not make it to the final destination would be too strong but you've spent a lot of time with them it's more... Yes? I am more concerned that... Uh, well, we did have a little... It, they, they would not be going alone, of course. We would be sending our own men uh, with them. Uh, it's more... I think it would be wise to do it quickly. Well, um... Well, you know that little obstacle we ran into on the road? Yes. I don't believe that um, it would be best for it to go that for the them to travel without us, lest they run into an obstacle like that again. Having a little bit more protection or at the very least a distraction should they run into that obstacle might allow our people to escape and safely deliver the tablets. It's... That is... More a diversion. And I do actually believe that uh, at least Anatole would try to protect them. I initially was not thinking it was a good idea, but you have thought this out, and even... I can have Pornok accompany you as well. He can fly, and can report to me if something goes awry fast. That is a very good idea. Yes. I think you are, I think you are correct. And as long as they have, our men have strict instructions that if anything goes awry, their priority is the tablets and everyone else's losses. Glad to see the uh, wisdom in my suggestion. You are very wise, Reynold. I think you are. <sighs> you give off this very fatherly in the priestly sense. 
very easy to trust and easy to charm. You come off maybe even a bit naive at points, but the more I know you, the more I see that you are also much darker and twisted inside. And I like it. Well, None of us were made without sin. <laughs> and uh, our goals align. I think uh, I can say that we are all interested in coming out on top of this mess that we found ourselves into. And at least yes. getting the best we can out of it. Yes. I would no, not I like to see anything terrible happen to our new acquaintances, but uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't have to live with them for the next year. And if it yes. means that uh, our patrons and sires lay off our backs, mm -hmm. then so be it. Yes, that is... <laughs> Very wise, Father Reynold. I think, I think your suggestions and your arrangements are are acceptable and very. And I agree with the transportation. Excellent. Um, you will send your raven. Uh, I will. I will ask Felix to accompany. I will. Uh... Perhaps uh, we can all send a few of our own personal guards. Actually, you know, you know who might be very good to go on this mission? Who? All of those wonderful guards that our patron supplied us with. Protecting his interests, of course. Oh, of course. I mean, yes, there aren't there many of them left, wonderful. so there wouldn't be anyone here to watch us. Shame that. Yes, quite a shame. Yes, I think it would be very prudent that with the attack that we had, that they are sent with as much backup and protection as possible, since obviously Mitru is after us, not I them. I don't even think we need to discuss anything else with them, because they will yeah. surely see their own master's best interests at heart, regardless of the situation that occurs. Yes, of course. Wonderful. Uh, we shall make the arrangements. Yeah. Yes, we are agreed. Good. I will be happy to to guide them. Whatever guards you send. You have my word that we will see it through. It is the least we can do for you agreeing to meet us halfway and provide us the copies. Again, if you have any more find any more things like this that need translating. I know who to bring them to. Oh, glorious day! This is wonderful. I'm very excited. We're going on a road trip. Bastion, my friend, I will miss you very much. <clears throat> miss you as well. And do know that well hmm? I suppose you'll know You'll, you'll, you'll know where to, uh, to find us. <laughs> At least for the next little bit. But I can always follow the word of God to you. He guides me like a beacon, and I can see. You and I, we have a future together. He guides me to you. I can tell. Look after yourself when you're out there. You be careful up here. Who knows what comes across the trail from Constantinople. <laughs> and the smelly vagrant of a man is going to pause for a moment and then give you a rather tight hug. Oh, I didn't know we were on hugging terms. 
<laughs> come on, we're basically brothers. Yeah, come on. Uh, I see you, um... <clears throat> oh, c come now. Did not Christ embrace Paul or Peter? Well, it probably didn't squeeze his ribs into paste. Oh, sorry. Oh. I'll let you go. Brush your sh shirt off. Oh, sorry. A little bit of, a little blood. Oh, it's okay. It was already oh, wait, there. It was already there. <sighs> Lady Teresa. Father Reynold. It has been a pleasure. I'm very, very happy to have met your acquaintance, and it has been wonderful working with you. It has been. It has been very interesting getting to know you, Anatole. <laughs> Thank you. Safe travels on the road. I hope that we have them as well, Lucida says. We should be going as soon as possible in order to put as much time behind us. Where are we headed? Was he in Buddha or past? He was in past, but Buddha and past basically share a wall. Hmm. Okay. They're across the river. One's on one side of the river. One's one on side of the river. river. One's on the other cat. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to remember which side he was on. Yeah. He's in past. He's in He's past. past. He's in past. We are going to past. Then we definitely will need to go. That is at least three weeks of travel. It was a pleasure to meet you, Lady Teresa. Father. Bastien. I look forward to meeting you all again. As Anatole says, I'm sure that our paths will converge again. I look forward to it. Hmm. And I look forward to seeing what you build here. It is very interesting. I think we need to see what architects come up with. I feel I have some adjustments to accommodate for Yuna. Oh. Well, I've been talking with the uh, architect a little bit. Let's see how we can make things more comfortable for all of us. Wonderful. With that, you say goodbye to Anatole and Lucida, as well as the guards who raise very little protest, giving them something to do, even though it's traveling through dangerous terrain, they should be back inside of a month and a half, maybe two months with the travel. It's a long walk and the horses are scant. But they will happily make their way. I think Teresa will probably tell um, Reynold to communicate only with Keith that Polnock is going to be following them because Polnock is going to be following them at a distance. So that if he catches a raven or something, or if people start commenting about a raven following them, to just hmm. like so with, throw wait, off send, any suspicion. And you're sending Felix. Oh, Felix. Or, or yeah, Carl. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send Felix as uh, kind of my own eyes uh, on that Sounds situation good. as well. Why did I have Keith? Um, it was Carl. That Carl was and, <laughs> and Felix. Yeah, uh, Carl's yeah. the wounded one, and uh, yeah, mm. so it'll be. Um, his goal is to um, stay alive. <laughs> and uh, um, it's a good goal. Yeah, uh, that's uh, like that's his mm -hmm. number one priority with this. But uh, uh, secondary to that is making sure it's accomplished and then returning. And uh, if uh, anything goes wrong, trying to GTFO and then follow. Okay. Sounds good. So. You say goodbye, and they depart, leaving you there with the workmen. Now, I have to ask, what are you doing for food? The next three nights, 
are going to be uh, rather feast or famine. You, of course, do have CC and Rosalia, as well as um, as well as Dragomir, and because um, you brought Dragomir as well, right? Hardy human servant that Bastion has ghouled. And you also have um, Sherezina to drain from, if you would like. Well, so um, you... what if I just start to, you know, having taking people, like anyone who wants to talk to a priest, confession, see if mm -hmm. there's anything that they need to do. You know, these are all God-fearing men, are they not? They are, yes. You know, little... Snack, point of blood here, point of blood there. Okay, so that sounds good. So um, over, basically, you are going to be able to remain steady if you are being careful. Very. So, okay. Uh, Teresa, are you indulging or to try to top yourself off, or are you trying to pretty much keep yourself as is? Oh, sorry, Reynold. Oh, uh, I do have efficient digestion, if that helps as well. Oh, okay, cool. So in that case, um, you can easily do so. You can even put yourself up a, a point of blood or two by the end of the week. But, Teresa, how about you? What are you doing for, for food? Going to be kind of... Um, I think she's going to um, bounce between Clara and Dominic for okay. to keep steady and then she may because you could also summon animals yes she's she's also potentially going to summon animals um for because okay. she knows Alyona prefers to hunt as well so she may okay. she will try and get animals but also like let them run away so Alyona can have the nice hunt and Sounds so then tries also have animals and Bastien, how are you going about doing it? Because I know Alyona is going hunting, so that's going to be pretty pretty good. So I'll say that Teresa, between those steps, you can basically put yourself, uh, let's say, two points from full, unless you are gorging yourself on animals. Okay, two points from full. No. Alyona, you can probably be two points from full as well. You're like a little peckish, but not terribly. Bastien, are you creeping in the night? Are you asking people to hunt for you? What are you doing? You do have a couple of blood dolls with you that you could drain. I think I would. <clears throat> if if they seem healthy, I would approach Rosalia for uh, nourishment, but uh, I think they would I think Bastion would kind of ghost the other members. Not to necessarily poach, but to like watch and take note of how they eat and possibly try to mimic such things. So I want to see, let's have you do a, a feeding roll then. So if you are kind of watching how they go about things. So are you feeding off of the workmen? Maybe just here or there. Okay. Make me a wits and stealth roll to see how that goes for you. All We're right. going to do this at a difficulty of seven for trying to be discreet among workmen. Uh, but if you're using, you have obfuscate two, so let's actually say it's difficulty six. Okay. It was <clears throat> wits wits and stealth all right because it's all it's about right. planning that moment to a strike all right and i have instinctive as a sure yeah go ahead yeah difficulty seven six. you said oh six No ones. Good. Okay, one, two, three. 
the, the ten are, rolled a nine, so, so I got. Are I got you three. are you gorging yourself? I don't think that there's a necessity for it. Okay. So in that case, uh, put yourself two from full. And this okay. is these totals two from full is at the end of the week. So five days will pass, and you have spent blood, but still remain that full. Uh, Aliona, you are going to be draining the animal population quite efficiently because you are spending extra blood every night to earth meld. So, uh, yep. there are... That said, you could also leave the animals out for the men to cook. Yeah, that's pretty much the plan. Okay. So, you are going to make... Uh, they are going to be very wary of you because they know something's wrong with you, just looking at you. You're a crazy wild I, woman. Yeah, I do Dare also they. make sure, like... Like, I make it look like I've, th that the blood has been drained like a hunter would. You know, I cut, I cut the you throat them, and you disembowel to let them. it. Yeah. I, I do all those hunter things away and then bring them just the meat. <laughs> yeah, Technically, that's that. the most efficient way to get the blood just like an wring animal, it out too. Like, a, like a rag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> wring it out over your mouth. Like a cartoon. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would like to point out that if anyone tries to follow me, I have a particular merit that makes that difficult. Perfect. Really? Mm -hmm. So, five, ni <laughs> five nights like pass. Challenge accepted. The workers are going to be doing quite a bit of work, and they're not there by themselves. There are also a few women around the camp as well, helping the workers out with cleaning and cooking and other things for a bit of the pay that you give. And your camp is full of life. And it is there on fifth night. You're wandering through the camp, Bastion. Just keeping an eye on things, the men casting you weird looks. You can hear them speaking in their local dialect about, I still don't understand why there's a fucking jester here. I think he just cast the evil eye on us. And, Renald, you are out there kind of appraising the situation as well. Teresa, you probably are around as well, maybe speaking a bit with Clara or conversing with Alyona. Can I get everyone just to roll me a d10, just by itself? Just a D10. Just Seven. A D10. Oh no. <laughs> Six. Five. I rolled a 10, but might I... I, I can remind the, the storyteller that I have unlucky. Mm -hmm. Is this a time that I should unluckily ro roll again? Mm, or do you want to sure. save it? So I'll use it tonight. Yep. Use it. And Oyona, what'd you get? Six. Six. All right. So you and Teresa are are having a, a, a quiet conversation. And as you were doing so, Bastion, you're just kind of wandering around, just kind of taking in the situation. Renald, you are appraising the work. And as you turn around, suddenly, there... There's a man standing there that you don't recognize. You've gotten to know the faces of the men and the women who have come into the camp. And there is now suddenly just a man standing in the middle of the building project. His skin is ashen gray, his face is angular, and he is standing in the shadows nearby. This won't do at all. This won't do. What is this, even a chapel? Why is there a chapel? This needs to be a tower. It won't do, will it? No, it won't. He turns and looks at you. He is dressed in simple, long gray robes. You know. Where is the stonemason? Where is the carpenter? They need to be spoken to immediately. Um, who are you? must care for the souls of and the well-being of the people here 
You are not sent here to build a chapel. You were sent here to build a tower to collect taxes through. I did not come here to build a chapel, Sura. Ayona growls under her breath and is like, I'm spending blood for for uh, claws, but I'm not like leaping to attack. I'm just like angry. <laughs> so I mean no offense, Sura, but I did travel a great distance to aid you in this project. I am Zelios, sent by Count Radu. It was oh. Reynolds' fault. He made them do it. I tried to tell them. I tried to tell them not to waste their time and your master's money on a, a chapel, but they didn't listen. You'll have to excuse Bastion. Welcome. Sorry, I did not realize who you were. Um, it is merely part of the tower. However, Maybe, maybe we can find some sort of a compromise. Yes, I can absolutely have a chapel worked into it, but at least you've only had the men clean, cleaning away things. I still need to draw up plans for you. I'd love to see and hear what your expertise suggests. It is my we belief should... that this should not be a simple tower, but we should build a fort, an actual castle here atop the mountain, from which to guard and handle all of the villages nearby. What, there are one, two, three on the Russian side, and one, two on the Transylvanian side of the mountain. Oh, I believe Lady Teresa will most enjoy this idea. We should go speak with, to her at once. Excellent. Good, good, good. And just to give you a sense, this is... This is what the dude looks like. I'm gonna like give Bastion a little bit of a stink eye at one point and just be like, <laughs> Bastion, my boy, <laughs> the fuck, <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> Where did that come from? Is the other guy gone? No, he's he's on you <laughs> like st he's he's walking with you. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna be like, where did that come from? <laughs> Where did what come from? <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> that was, uh... <clears throat> Where is this Lady Hello? Teresa? I must speak with her. Uh, Hello? The... I hear you are looking for me? I am Zelios, the Builder. Here to design your keep. Wonderful. I would prefer to call it a some castle. Ideas. I... You cannot I expect to I hold taxes can. from a watchtower, my lady. Of course not. Nor is it fitting, nor practical. It is my intention. Is this all of you? Y yes. <laughs> well met to each of you then it is my intention I may include a chapel as well Sura, but I would create a strong but aesthetically pleasing tower from which the castle will design and grow however starting with the tower I would like to make it aesthetically pleasing to your specifications as well as the region which this shall lowered over. I also would like to equip it with a secret escape tunnel. A way for you to flee should anything arise at this location being as sensitive as it is. Of course, the tunnel, though, must be as barren as possible for support. We must keep it as close to Earth as we can be. That is acceptable. I also would have secret sleeping chambers built in for your use, of course. It would be useless to have anything else. However, 
There is a matter of my fee. Go on. Yes. What do you have to offer me? And as he says that, can I get an intelligence and seneschal roll from anyone who's been handling oh, the money? Oh, yeah. I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Also, Eliona is picking at her teeth with her, like, protean claw. Just like, you know. Seneschal? Just, right. What's Therese, a seneschal? Therese is just like, uh, looking crap. very. I just, uh, I just rolled. You're going to pick out, like, a bit of sinew the size of a postage stamp. <laughs> I rolled I'll a D10 to see how big of, it was, and I rolled an 8. I'll just flick it kind of at the ground in his general direction. <laughs> Not trying to hit him or anything, but... Droll. <clears throat> Alright, difficulty of, of 6, please. Okay. Ooh! Three successes for Teresa. Three successes? You've been rationing Ooh. money well. However, affording food, affording wages, affording materials, you know that you don't have anything to pay this guy with. In fact, mm. you have enough to get this started, but with inside the next few weeks, you are going to have to find funding. Tax. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will have, um, there. Are, like he said, there are five villages nearby. There is also, this is the only pass through from Constantinople and silk, uh, spices, and other things flow through this region. Not quite um, right now, because the passes have just opened, but very soon. Tolls and taxes. Tolls and taxes as well. Um, Didn't I have a background of two, two dots and resources. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. does... So you could draw upon that wealth as well, yes. Yeah. Yes, it, Teresa will draw upon that wealth as well. And did Radu not say it was okay to gather funds from the immediate areas? Uh, Radu didn't, but your patron did. Mm-hmm. Patron did, and then uh, Micah also gave us some gold as well. Yes. That was mostly a Stargo fund. So basically he's your, well, he's, your angel, okay. he's your angel investor. He's my, he's our angel investor. Okay. So yes, no, Teresa will, um, Teresa will go into her carriage and, or I guess we've been here for a week. So Teresa will, yeah, it's probably still in the carriage, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa will go into the carriage, grab a, a chest of her funds, um, and pull out what she would think would be a good starter amount. Okay, for an artisan of his of his mm -hmm. experience, what, uh, yeah. it would probably be ten times a normal worker's wage minimum. What uh, okay. uh, what was this guy's name again? Uh, Zelios. 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 Uh, can I Zelios. do a politics check to see what I know about him? Absolutely. Intelligence, politics, difficulty of seven. Oh. I know him from the lore. Yay. <laughs> Jen lore. That's why I want to know what I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, seven, you say. Yeah. That'll be three, sir. Just thorough count. Yes. All right, then give me a moment. Still three. <laughs> three. Um, you know that he has a habit of gaining influence very quickly. He sees building organizations of mortals as similar to placing the bricks on a wall. Um, he tends to proceed and create these projects. He is incredibly well known for his insight and acumen and has gained a great amount of, of praise and influence through the creation of castles. And uh, the he's traveled all over Europe building fortresses for canines whose Any... wealth or whims appeal to him. Wealth or whims. Any particular quirks? You know that he is a bit of a mystic and okay. is particularly interested in both engineering and uh, geomancy. The idea of blessed or fortunate places. Uh, 
So like ley lines and like mm -hmm. a man, so main lines. Yep. Hmm. We will be upfront with you, Zelios. We I currently do not have a lot to offer. Uh, we are hoping perhaps that uh, we will be in your debt for this. As you have said, this is a particularly influential place, and you would have ultimately be the the architect of whatever design this would be on this pass. Having friends in control of such a wealthy trade route might prove an advantage to you and help fund things for you in the future. Hmm. As you as say you this... Her. Hmm. So as I was saying, as Teresa... You say this, Teresa mm -hmm. approaches. Yeah. As a starter, well, we can provide you this, though. And she'll, like, have a bag full of clinking coins and gems, various. He will look at it. Uh, Renault, I would like you to do me a favor and make me a manipulation plus... I mean, it's haggling. Uh, I would say manipulation and... Expression? expression. Leadership? Yeah, let's do expre expression or leadership. Either one would be fine by me. Um, all right. And so I'm confident, which gives me a difficulty break on manipulation. So, perfect. Uh, Ooh. fives. Fives. Okay. Uh, do, 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 that will be four. Four successes. He will look down into the bag that you're holding out, Teresa. This is wrong. How should we correct it? What is I am an artisan. <coughs> but I am still a worker. And he will reach in and he will pluck one-tenth the amount from the bag. And will hand it back to you. I will do this and for future favor. You have much foresight. That and I'll, said, I'll, I'll give a sm little smile to Lady Teresa. Should I need you in the future, you will aid me. Hmm. I have a feeling that this will be an achievement. Well. You shall paint. Enough pleasantries. Lady? I was just going to say, you are going to paint this landscape with a beautiful beacon. You will single-handedly mark this landscape forever. I cannot wait to see what you create here. And he will smile in return. Which is where we're going to call game for tonight as you begin the construction of your castle! 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 <laughs> Therese Perfect. is so excited about a castle, man. Ooh. Castle! I get my own castle. I become the void I am. Aww. I shall be the, the garden hermit. Garden oh hermit. my god. Gardener. No, oh, don't mind don't mind Eliona. She's the person we pay to be our hermit. She's the person yeah. we pay to eat people. Yeah. When I learned well, about so garden today, hermits, though. it was quite a quite an experience. Mm -hmm. They're great. Hey folks, uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight and for enjoying this game alongside us. Folks, uh, players, did you have fun? Oh my gosh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> that was great. You killed a horse. I'm sorry. I killed a horse. It's okay. Uh, so, uh, do I have to for... roll any humanity or anything? No, it's a horse. No, it's a horse. Okay. It, cool. it, it counts, like, not, not to say that horses don't matter, but in terms of game mechanics, it's basically property damage. In terms of morality, oh, okay. it's yeah. an animal. Yeah. It died. You, you butchered an animal, and especially in this era, it doesn't have soul. It doesn't have a soul. It's just an animal. Mm, right? Like that's fair. Maybe liked it. 
Uh, but fantastic job. Everybody role played the hell out of their characters. I'm very pleased with you. Uh, we are coming up on the interlude in this chapter because there's only one more scene after the interlude of this chapter before we do a time jump. But I think we might be able to get an extra episode or two out because I've got some ideas for some improv role playing. Oh, that's I love that. Oh, I'm, oh that's exciting. Because like, exciting. Well, that is one of the things about old White Wolf modules that are interesting. So these pre-written adventures, they give you beats and scenes, but then they're like, for the next month, your characters can do other stuff. And you're like, oh, I guess I got to. So if you're not prepared to fill in gaps, they are quite difficult. Uh, but I mean. I've got a lot of ideas. I just have to review a few things. Um, but that's where you kind of make it your own campaign or chronicle, right? Yeah. And it's going to get pretty bad before it gets better. Uh, so I hope none of you die in the next couple games. Dun dun dun. Um, so we're already dead. Oh, what am good I counter. buying with all this XP the chat is? Oh, speaking of us. which, uh, take five for tonight. Whoa. Ooh. So that'll be two from the uh, from me and three from the chat. I have thirty two XP. Holy crap! Or do we have thirty four? Uh, she already spent oh, something. Oh, thirty four. Yeah. Hmm. So thirty four. I haven't XP. spent any. So you well, want to buy Gate three? Yeah. I think I I think I should buy some things. <laughs> yeah. Obfuscate and aspects, right? Um, all right. So folks, that is going to be it for us tonight. Uh, y'all let me know what you buy before next episode. Cause you'll have a bit of time to develop some new powers. Uh, and I'll have to update our, our pre-roll. Okay, uh, a big thank you to everybody who supports us. Our sponsor bookworm games is amazing. Go use code dorktales to save 15%. A big thank you to, uh, our patreon because patrons keep this stream going this is my full-time job guys and every patron helps me do it a little more a big thank you to everybody out there who supports us um our divine producer is my mom hi mom uh our demonic producers precarious and colonna curd our wizards of the patreon tammy the forever cleric the ink goblin and sorcerer sanguine and the high council taryn dustin amberthist raven with baubles karasha urquhart chef Eladef, laruk mike baxter and iridian and of course the rest of our heroes and very important patrons you're all amazing thank you for keeping the lights on um join us join us it'll be great um and uh, it's a lot of xp and <laughs> we'll see how they spend it here next week on the transylvania chronicle good night everybody <laughs>